Hello world and welcome and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Hello world and welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Trisha and today we're going to be going over some tech that I have. It's actually something that I'm really excited about. I'm, I keep looking over to it. But it's this. It's my little Polaroid camera. Um, it's the first Polaroid camera that I ever got. Hopefully it's not the last Polaroid camera that I have. So this camera in particular is actually the Polaroid Land Pronto. Polaroid Land Camera Pronto. So from $20 to $50 on Etsy is how much this camera is, but I paid for it at my local shop of $35. So I'm guessing I got it for a pretty good deal, honestly, for like what it's retailing here online. This camera takes the SX7 film. The one that I bought from Amazon cost me $21.51. Now, here's the thing when I was originally looking this up in the store with my sister, because we actually saw this in the store, and she was like, why don't you buy that? And I was like, eh. But then again, I've always wanted a Polaroid camera, and I was like, hey, you know what, why not? So honestly, I don't even know if this camera even works. And I spent $35 on it. We got to find out today if it works or not. So yeah, this is, this is literally a blind investment. I don't know if this is gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. When I was looking at this film originally, I thought that like I could take um I don't know why I thought I could take 600 pictures with this. Now looking at the film, literally on the little film card, it literally says this. Here are eight wishes. Use them wisely. Eight wishes. Eight wishes. That basically means that there are only eight things in here and it cost me $21. Oh, man, you know, we're gonna round that $21 up to $22. So $35 flat plus $22. I spent a whopping $57 in total for this investment for a Polaroid camera. Do I believe that that was a bad investment? No. If you go to the official Polaroid website, a Polaroid camera will literally cost you $150, depending on which one you buy. So you know what? I will take my $57 investment with pride. Let's get into actually putting the film into the camera because, like I said before, I this is literally my first time literally cracking open the film to use it. Now that the film is actually inside of the camera, with the camera, to see like if it actually works or not. Um, am I nervous? No. No, I'm not really nervous. Like the camera looks like it's in really good condition, so I'm not really nervous. Like I honestly really 100% do not know how to use this camera. So if I mess up in this video and you're actually like a camera fanatio, fanatio? aficionado, boom then leave a comment down below of how I'm actually supposed to be using this camera. Like I said before, this was a blind purchase, but, but I'm actually really proud of it. All right, so I'm gonna set up my little camera taking area, which is literally right here. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. so good um so i just took the picture um with the polaroid and it instantly like did its little song and dance so now i have seven wishes left so we're gonna see how it looks 
we're going to hold it up to the camera. Actually, we're going to move the camera to get a better um, shot at this. Okay, so I moved the camera down so you guys can see the, the, the Polaroid. So, and like I'm moving any, everything else out of the way. So, here goes nothing. First impressions. Am I taking this out right? I think it's developing. Is it? What am I supposed to do? Bruh. I'm not even pulling on this thing hard. And it's not coming out of the camera. So, um, we gotta do some research on you, buddy. And it's a zone focus camera. One second. Let it focus on. Bruh. <laughs> I might end up using all eight wishes today because I want to get this right. <laughs> oh my god. Two pictures that we took off the Polaroid camera. Some really ancient technology, y'all. All right, guys, we're going to do some more research because I'm um, not going to lie, I'm feeling a little bit intimidated by a Polaroid camera. Video number two. So I'm back from watching two more videos and literally I'm not even gonna like mess with you. The second video that I watched was literally the guy putting in the card grid. He took this off. Like after he put the thing inside of here, he didn't put it back every single time that he's taking a picture. He took this off. So I think what this message basically says when it says insert this side and don't take off this is basically to say like when you buy the cartridge oh by the way this is the cartridge that came inside of it when i like was removing it basically saying like when you buy the cartridge don't remove this outside of it just put the thing inside of the polaroid and call it done to the day boom beam the third video that i watched was with a young woman it's from six years ago and she was explaining to the audience me how to work with the exposure of this camera now i was looking at the knob on the top here and it has a bunch of numbers um to basically be from like three feet to ten feet now i didn't know honest to god that was in feet i didn't look at it honestly i just put the film in and i was like yeah i'm gonna take photos mom but um such is my life so she was basically saying with the exposure part of the camera that if you are in darker situations pretty much basically what i got from the video if you're in dark settings so like shadow or it's nighttime, light around you still, like you're walking in the woods and there's a shadow because she was taking pictures of her dog. Put the exposure darker so that so that a lot of light doesn't get into the photo. And then if you're in a lighter setting, which I'm in a room right now, put your exposure to lighter. So I think these pic this picture in particular, which is the second picture that I took, I think it's just overexposed because I'm not gonna lie to you, I had this knob on all the way to like so there is four notches of light and three notches of darkness and i had it all the way on light so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this picture again i moved the focus to be three feet the exposure is in the middle between darkness and light or actually i'm gonna put it on normal which is the first light square and we're gonna retake this picture right here my computer's in the way at this time but i don't really feel like moving it aesthetic so let's do this. Alright. Give it a couple seconds. I don't know why it's so difficult to take these out. Like, I'm not even pulling this hard. Oh man, I... I don't know if this is me, 
but um, it looks different to y'all. It looks different to me. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Oh, oh, wait, I think we finally got it. After three tries, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think we might have got it. Wait a minute, don't get excited now. We're not gonna get excited. We're gonna wait for this thing to like finish. So I took it out because I'm impatient. And I don't know if you're supposed to shake this or not, but in the movies they're always like this. So, so shall I be. I don't think I'm supposed to take this out because like there's this like weird little lining on top. But it's really blurry. So that was on what? That was on the left here? Okay. I think after three tries we finally got something here guys so this is what the picture looks like after three tries with the exposure notch on the last light thing hopefully i'll like put a bar up here so I, it's easier for me to explain but i put it on the last lighting and this is how the picture came out so this is what the picture looks like Oop. <laughs> This is what the picture looks like after I just took it. So, we're gonna- oh wait! Okay, so this is from the first shot and it finally lightened up to a good point. So, I did do pretty good my first time. Um, I think I literally just overexposed the crap out of it, which is why it came out so horrible. The second photo- no, no. I think I underexposed this. I think I overexposed this. I think I exposed this to a good point, but I need to expose it more. That makes sense? Okay guys, we're on attempt number four. <laughs> I'm literally about to use all of them. Oh God, mom, when you watch this video, please know that, um... <laughs> all right, let's do this, attempt number four. Okay, so we're gonna move the exposure knob to the second white bar bringing more light and yeah we're gonna see how this pans out um so far camera usage is pretty easy because you just point and shoot um getting a quality photo taking many lessons here many lessons Attempt number four. Now we just wait. Oh, this one actually came out further than the other one. Um, so might not have to like yank it out of the um, thing. So it's like, look. <gasps> Finally, the first one that comes out like regular. All right, so I'm not gonna shake this one. I'm actually just gonna leave it. So after um, taking the fourth photo, I thought this would be a good opportunity to compare all of the pictures that I've taken. Um, I also decided off screen to also name all of the pictures wishes because I thought it would be cute. So here we go with the comparison out of all of the photos. Starting with wish number one. Wish number one was the first photo that I took, as you guys all know. Um, this photo, I actually took it on the second to last um, light knob, and it's overexposed. It's really, really blurry, and it's hard to see the image itself. Um, I do not recommend taking it on this light setting if you're indoors. With wish number two, I took this one all the way on the lightest setting. It's self-explanatory. It's overexposed. I highly, highly, highly do not recommend this unless you have like a blackout situation and you're trying to do flash photography. The next photo is photo number three. This one I actually took on the middle tier um, light setting. So if you look on the knob um, with a Pronto camera, there are seven tiers and I took it on the middle one, the fourth knob. Now, this one I recommend for indoors. It's actually my favorite one and I thought it came out the best. However, on the top of it, um, as you can see, I messed up a little bit because it was really, really difficult to take the photos out of the Polaroid at first, but all in all, I think it was a good shot. We have wish number four, which is the last wish that you guys saw me take a picture of. Um, this one to me is a little bit darker. It was taken on the third knob um, on the light setting. 
and I just think it's darker than wish number three. So like in comparison, when comparing these two um, side by side, you can actually see that I was right. It is darker. And yeah, so either one to me would be a good shot indoors um, in the light setting that I'm in. But I highly recommend you try the middle tier though, if you're starting out just like I did, and then move towards the darker or the lighter settings, depending on where you are. Although wish number four is a little bit more blurry, I thought it would be a good idea to try if what would happen if you put um, the knob in between the two of them. Hence comes wish number five. So wish number five I was actually taken using um, the idea that I suggested before, which is to take the photo in between three and four. Um, and it actually reminded me of um, wish number one, to be honest with you, because of how blurry it, it is and how out of focus it is. Of course, compared side by side to wish number one, it's more like it's darker, but comparing it to, um, but the similarities between wish number one and wish number five is that they're both overexposed and they both have like this spark in them. I don't know. So all in all, I think it was a good session. And wish number three to me was my favorite. Um, for a person who is taking Polaroid photos like straight from a Polaroid camera first at hand, I think I did pretty good. Um, it's sad to say that I wasted a lot of the, the film, but it's fine. <laughs> and here are all of the photos in comparison to each other, um, all the way from wish number one to wish number five. And as you can see, the one that I put in the middle for my favorite, my personal favorite was wish number three, because I thought it was the most in focus. You could see everything and the light looked pretty good. It didn't look too dark to me. So yeah, guys, that's the video. All in all, I can honestly say that purchasing this camera along with this film um, still was a good purchase for $57. I just need to get used to taking like pictures on an actual Polaroid camera instead of taking photos that I already have and just making them Polaroid-esque in Photoshop. I'm happy that I sat down and I took five Polaroids to see, to just test and mess with exposure. Personally, I've never had to mess with the exposure of a Polaroid camera, so this is all new to me. And I'm happy that I sat down and I actually like did this. It just makes me like respect photography even more. So we're gonna master Polaroid. Um, not gonna lie to you, I am really disappointed though that this pack only comes with eight cartridges, cartridges, eight square things to take film strips. Boom, bada bing, we're gonna do that. I'm actually a little bit disappointed though that this little box only comes with eight film strips. So I was looking up earlier when I was looking at um, how much this was when I bought it on Amazon, and there is a set um, that isn't in color, it's in black and white, and it, it retails for about like $49. And it's 16 in the pack. So <laughs> when I get better, when I get better at taking Polaroid pictures, I'll make the little investment to probably purchase every single one of the packs that uh, disrespectful. I'll probably take the time to purchase all of the little film packs that this camera utilizes so that I can see what the photos look like in each of the different film packs so that I can, you know, get better at taking pictures in the different film packs. I think what I'm gonna do between now and whenever I get the money to do that is try to research more of this camera. Yeah, literally, just try to research more of this camera. Based off of the five wishes, or rather just call them wishes, based off of the five wishes that I just did, the best bet for like to get the the, the greatest photo quality in in indoors for me just to keep it in the middle tier and then the second best one if you can't keep it in the middle tier because it just doesn't work out for you is to go one tier up so that is probably a rule of thumb that i would tell anybody who has one of these cameras and is like me doesn't know how to use it i should probably i should have probably said in the beginning but when i got this camera it literally was just the camera like no instructions came with it apparently there's supposed to be like other like add-ons that come in the pack with this like when you buy it originally from like where the store the manufacturer who makes this like polaroid.com like when you buy this you, there's supposed to be like, added stuff that comes with it but i'm i never got that added stuff guys i literally just got the straight up camera and i bought the film off amazon so for a good 
for a good for yeah for a good like session like this I'd say I was pretty successful I learned how to put in film I learned what you're not supposed to do I thought that I was wrong with taking this out when I when like I first put the cartridges inside the camera but I wasn't wrong at all it did what it was supposed to do so fantastic and I'm happy that these I'm happy that the camera works actually like I'm oh disrespectful I'm happy that the camera works. That's probably like one of my greatest accomplishments that I can say is that I made a purchase of a camera that actually works. I can now go home happily to my mother and say, Mom, remember that purchase I made with that camera? It works. Yeah, you know, for a nice little project, this is a good project. I don't know, I think I did pretty good. The only other thing though that I probably get is like one of the videos. He had a little like stabilizer that he like attached to the back end of his camera So that's probably something else I'd look into getting and then the other thing that I'd look into getting is with the first video I was watching the guy he was saying that this camera is supposed to be used with like a flash box So I'm gonna look into finding the flash box for this so that the camera set can be actually complete so But that's probably gonna be like another hefty purchase on my end So we'll see about that I think we should just first focus on getting down exposure and then we can work on flash. Um, I think when it comes to like flash photography, I'm just going to work on it with my phone first to see how it actually works with the shadows and the darks and then we're going to go into working with the Polaroid. But all in all guys, I'm really excited about this purchase. I'm going to put it down before, <laughs> before like, I shake it into oblivion. But like, nah, I'm really, really excited about my purchase and yeah. I'm, I think I, I think I did good, you know? Come on, y'all. <laughs> I think I did good. But thank you guys so much for watching my video. As always, if you liked this content, please leave the video a like. If you liked my content overall, please consider subscribing. If you have something to say, leave a comment down below. And as always, try. That's it. I'm done. See you guys later.